Wow, so tomorrow's a big day for everyone, or I should say today's a big day for everybody, right? You know, because, you know, they're going to have the impeachment of Donald Trump in the House, right? That's a real big deal for you. Wow, aren't you going to be able to pay your your mortgage on that? Get that, uh, get that dental work you've been putting off for the last decade done. You know, it's going to help you put the new tires on the car. Take care of mama, you know? Make sure she's got a bed pan. You know what I'm saying? Like, this impeachment thing is great for us. Oh, man, think of all the groceries we're going to be able to buy with it. Man, we'll be set for life with this impeachment thing, man. Nothing we need more. I said there's nothing we need more than a good old impeachment to really take care of the uh, the wealth or the income inequality. That's going to totally get rid of mass incarceration in. Level the playing field for everyone. Women will be safer in the workplace and men, well, we won't have to uh, eat our service weapons or OD on opiates and the frustration because we couldn't find a job. I mean, these great things all stem from impeachment. It's amazing what it does. So unless you live, you know, unless you live on a rock or you smoke rock, You've been hearing a lot about the impeachment process, what's going on. So tomorrow's, today is the big vote day. And this is what they were saying about That's right, man, because a lot of people were really pumped up about this. They, they, they really are excited about it. And that's that was New York you just saw. Those are people in New York outside in the cold weather chanting and peaching Donald Trump. And look, don't get me wrong, it serves him right. I mean, he was doing a whole lot of lock her up, lock her up, lock her up, lock her up. Somehow impeach Trump doesn't really roll off the tongue as nicely, you know, from a rhythmic standpoint. But it's it's functional, I guess. Lock her up. Lock her up. Impeach that Trump. Impeach Trump. Impeach Trump. It's just... It's no four measures. It's like three. It's like snap. So anyway, uh, a lot of the people, the uh, a lot of talk about the impeachment prospects uh, or the actual inevitable impeachment because you know it's going to happen because, well, it's a big club and you ain't in it. We ain't in it. I'm not in it either. Uh, they were talking about this as well on the cable news networks. Work impeachment vote in. We turn now to the Capitol, where the impeachment debate will unfold tomorrow on the floor of the House. By the end of the day, President Trump is likely to become the third president in U.S. history to be impeached. Nancy Cordes is there tonight. And these are American citizens. These, these are the state. These are the these are these National are Security Council employees. The impeachment fight stretched from Congress to Florida's Trump Doral today. <laughs> Nearly all House Democrats have now said they'll vote yes. There is a crime in progress. A risky vote for some. If this was a political calculation, then I wouldn't have come out for an inquiry and I wouldn't be voting yes on articles. It's a tough vote for some swing district Republicans, too. Pennsylvania's Brian Fitzpatrick announced his no vote today, but added, let me be clear, President Trump's call with President Zelensky showed poor judgment. I'm not an impartial juror. Today, Republican leader Mitch McConnell rejected the Democrats' call to hear from new witnesses, like acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney, in the Senate trial to come. This concept is dead wrong. But he thought it was dead right during the Clinton impeachment trial. Have you done a 180 on this? I think it's pretty safe to say in a partisan exercise like this, people sort of sign up with their own side. <laughs> and what we may have uh, felt uh, 20 years ago may not be the same as today. 
House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has had no official response to the scathing letter President Trump wrote her, but when a reporter asked her about it, she called it ridiculous and really sick. Nora. All right, Nancy, thank you. You just gotta love Mitch McConnell, don't you? You know, he's got his own style of uh, putting people to sleep, but also scaring them at the same time. Hey, Mitch McConnell, how do you like being a hypocritical bastard? Because now you don't think impeachment is a good thing, but back when you voted for it under Bill Clinton, you thought it was the perfect thing. In fact, you thought it was a way to preserve democracy. Remember that? Well, I, 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 I believe that there is a time for everything. That time is not now, though. No, 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 not now. That now is not the time. Now is a bad time. Now is the worst time to, to try to have a democracy. We need to we need to all band together and buy me a neck. Yeah, you know, um, they say it's going to be a tough vote for Republican lights. That's uh, Republicans who often lean Democratic, and it's also going to be a tough vote. For the uh, corporate Democrats, it would be 95% of them. <laughs> you know, because, like, by and large, you know, for a corporate, from a corporate standpoint, Donald Trump's done a good job. Um, and isn't it cute how everybody acts like this is, like, really serious, like, like it means shit? <laughs> I'm just saying they act like it's really, you know... Like, like, you know, like it's going to matter at the end of the day. <laughs> it's, it's not going to matter. It's like, you know, we're going to impeach you. Oh, I'm scared. I'm going to hit you with this hammer. Made of Nerf material. <laughs> oh, I was almost worried until you said it was made of Nerf material. No, don't do that. I'm a victim. Ah... I'm afraid. I'm a victim. Ah, everybody vote for me in response. Ah. That's exactly what's going on with this whole thing, guys. All right, so Donald Trump already knowing what he's doing, doing it to great effect is he's playing victim. He's going he's gonna to use every bit of this. He's going to squeeze all of the lemon out of the lime, all of the lemon out of the lemon, all the juice out of the lemon. That's it. That's what he's going to do. And uh, and see how much leverage he can get out of this. He said he's not going to go quietly through this procedure. And uh, and he's, he's right. He's not going quietly. In fact, he wrote a scathing letter that he forced Nancy Pelosi to read. That Donald Trump, man, that guy is malicious. Check this out. Impeachment debate will unfold tomorrow on the floor of the House. By the end of the day, President. Impeachment vote in the House tomorrow has sent a stunning and scathing stream of consciousness letter to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. The letter appears to be something of a dictated 2,700 word rant, almost as if it's 60 angry tweets cobbled together and put on White House stationery, complete with the now familiar all caps, multiple exclamation points, accusations, projections, falsehoods, insults, grievances, about 40 references to himself, I, me, my, and four to the American people. A letter that President Trump says he wrote for the quote, purpose of history. The letter accuses Democrats of violating their oaths of office and cheapening impeachment, trying to steal the 2020 election and quote, declaring open war on American democracy by pursuing impeachment, President Trump calls the abuse of Congress article of impeachment a quote, I'm sorry, the abuse of power article of impeachment a completely disingenuous, meritless, and baseless invention of Pelosi's imagination. And in terms of the case for obstruction of Congress, quote, preposterous and dangerous. The president misrepresenting a number of quotes from Speaker Pelosi and Joe Biden, also accusing Pelosi of either lying when Pelosi says that she prays for him or that she prays for him, quote, in a negative sense. And of course, the president also claims that his phone call with the Ukrainian president was perfect when we know if his own administration officials had shared that view, the president would not be, right now, 
on the brink of only the third impeachment of a U.S. president in the history of this republic. ...to join Andrew Johnson and Bill Clinton as the only president... Tomorrow, Donald J. Trump is expected to join Andrew Johnson and Bill Clinton as the only presidents in the history of the country to be impeached. If you want to know how the president feels about that, well, he sent an absolutely unhinged, deranged, six-page, tweet-like letter to Nancy Pelosi today in which he said, among a variety of other things, quote, you have cheapened the importance of the very ugly word impeachment and, quote, more due process was afforded to those accused in the Salem witch trials. Fact check, not true. Yeah, so Donald Trump decided that he was going to write this letter, and, and I'm glad he wrote it because we'll be able to see from time onward just how crazy he really was. Yeah, that'd be really nice. And he might as well put that in documented, and I'm sure once he leaves office, he'll write several books which will make him millions and millions of dollars, just like all of his predecessors. So we look forward to that. And yeah, you know, Donald Trump, uh, you know, the, let me back up real quick, and just for anybody, just in case you're not sure. The, re, the, the purpose or the basis of the impeachment are two things. One, they say that he uh, withheld money from the Ukraine uh, with a quid pro quo to get uh, the Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden, and uh, yeah, so that's one thing, you know, to get it, to get leverage over a political rival, which is an abusive office, they say. Okay, and the other thing was obstructing the investigation into did he withhold or did he do a quick pro quo with Ukraine in order to oust the political rival, <laughs> or to get dirt on the political rival to get, to gain an advantage. So it's that's the reasons, okay? Now, that's the basis of their impeachment. And it looks like it's going to happen. I mean, it looks like Donald Trump will join Bill Clinton in that long list of presidents who have been impeached. Which really isn't a big deal. I mean, they've been hanging out together for the last 20 years. That's right, guys. They, Donald Trump and Bill Clinton have been friends for a long time. Their kids grew up together in New York City. They've been friends all this time. You know, I, I'm still not certain that this whole thing, this whole Trump presidency isn't just a polite bet between millionaires, rich and powerful. Not unlike the trading places bet with Montague and that other guy over a buck. Yeah, remember they, you know, there was over one dollar. They changed Eddie Murphy's life totally took him out of his situation as an experiment to see what would happen and if they could do it and, and at the end of the day it was just a dollar so just to kind of take someone's life and do like that and shake it up and discombobulate it which is sort of like what Donald Trump has done to the American people if not just the American people but the world and it's sort of like what the Clintons have done to the American people not just the American people but the world so this whole thing guys has been an experiment one big joke. <laughs> it's just a joke, man. It's not really your president. He's not really, and, and Clinton isn't really thinking about running again and all of those uh, interviews she's doing. Those are just jokes. All of this is a joke. None of this exists in real life. You all been a part of an elaborate punking. A candid camera episode gone a little bit too far. Yeah, man, this is not, y'all tripping. This is just, this ain't, this ain't America. This is a joke. All right, guys, so at the end of the day, what will they get? What will this mean for you and me, all of us? Well, it'll probably, I think it's going to help the Republican Party maintain the office. I think this will help Donald Trump. Because when you see those people lined up out there, you see those Democrats lined up out there, all pumped up that they're going to get rid of Donald Trump, they're going to be deflated. Because I don't believe all of them understand that there is this much possibility. When I say this, I mean zero. This much possibility that uh, Donald Trump will be pushed out of office. It's not. 
And when that happens, when these people that they've riled up, these people that they've been able to get clicks and views and make all types of advertising revenue off of this thing for the last few months, I mean, and really extend it all the way back to Russia, all of the revenue that they've been able to rack up, all of the all of the donations the Democrats have been able to secure, all of the emails. Hell, we hear about Donald Trump's crazy ass emails. Have you read a Nancy Pelosi email over the last three years begging for money to stop Donald Trump? You must not have a share blue account. You must have never given to a Democrat ever. Nancy Pelosi's been writing letters so much, I thought I owed her money. Oh, please help. We gotta stop him. Oh, God, no. Our democracy. One letter, she threatened that she was on the edge of the Sears Tower was about to jump if I didn't send in 50 bucks right away to stop Donald Trump. That was just as disgusting and, 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 and errant and crossed the line as the Donald Trump six-page rambling salad of words and stupidity and conjecture and insults. I mean, guys, all I'm saying is they've both been using the pen to to, to, to get their message out. And, but it's going to help the Republicans, and that's going to be the kick in the ass. At the end of the day, Republicans who are also brainwashed similarly, brainwashed the other way. They're thinking, oh, I got to defend Trump. Oh, he's looking out for me. Oh, that guy's really, he's really fighting for me, and they're trying to stop him because he's fighting for me so much. He's just, he's just throwing his body at harm's way. Everything's on the line. He's like JFK, the way he's... It's like MLK and JFK, and he's our Malcolm X, the way he's fighting for us and willing to pay the ultimate price to sacrifice for us, and we got to fight for Donald Trump. Let's get everybody up. Let's go vote. <laughs> That's the thing, guys. There's some people who are dumb enough to think that. So the Democrats dumb enough to think that they're going to get something out of this, like this is going to help them in some way. And all I'm trying to tell you is I think it's going to help the Republicans have a larger turnout, which will make it difficult or more difficult for an actual candidate to defeat Donald Trump in 2020. Having the inverse reaction, the actual opposite reaction or effect from the action that people think it's supposed to have. And the Republicans who are clanging about, running around with their heads on fire, thinking that somehow Donald Trump will be ousted, not knowing this is all a futile engagement. I'm not even sure this isn't a setup between Trump and Pelosi, because they've been playing footsies for a while. Oh, well, Pelosi rambling and shaking and shit. Oh, Trump, you, you are something else, Donald J. Trump, and I will pray for you. Oh, don't pray for me. Don't pray for me, you windbag. You you vacuous pool of est- estrogen and, 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 and oldness. I've never liked women my age. I won't start now. Trump, you. You cut it out right there. I'm a Christian. And... I sleep with my money, thank you. Raised it over a long career of raising money. So anyway, who's getting screwed in this whole process is us, guys. We're the ones who, at the end of the day, will have to do our best to get behind a candidate. Um, If you actually want change in America, you're going to have to vote for a candidate that's going to actually be able to turn out voters. And I'm sorry, I I don't know if you know this or not, but that's that's not John Delaney or Michael Bloomberg or Amy Klobuchar. Not even close to it. All right. It's going to have to take a candidate that has a revolution behind him, and there's only one candidate that I know that actually has a revolution behind them, that actually has the momentum and the infrastructure in place to defeat a Donald Trump and to withstand the effects of this cluster, this this whatever this is, this catastrophe known as a... a, a you know, another thing about this that people should know is there were more people in favor of the impeachment before they realized what it was about. Yeah, at the beginning of this thing, before they started these hearings, it was like most people 
or fifty percent of the country was like, "Yeah, get him." Then when they started hearing it, what it was about, they were like, uh, "Not so much." I mean, because that's what happens when you become more informed. You realize you're being taken for a ride. I'm not saying that Donald Trump should be protected, and I'm definitely not trying to protect him or soft shoe him. I mean, this guy, I mean, I, I don't like Donald Trump for a lot of reasons, but it's all based on policy. It's the cutting of different programs. It's, it's the, the bottoming out of uh, a safety nets across this country, programs. How could you cut meals on wheels and look in the mirror when you got a defense budget almost worth, I mean, $734 billion, some crazy amount? Like, how could you cut grandma's cookies? How could you triple the amount of affordable housing as if you needed to do it? It just doesn't make sense. Like, he did, things have been done in his administration that I would be upset no matter who did them. But these Democrats who act like, you know, the Republicans are so horrible because they won't cross the proverbial picket line in order to oust their own, their own president, they wouldn't, they didn't have the cojones to even tell Obama Hey, maybe the drone attacks are stopping. Maybe you shouldn't go to HBCUs and tell black people that they suck. Yeah, but they wouldn't though. They wouldn't. They 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 wouldn't even say a, a sideways word. I mean, there's been more dissension towards Donald Trump from his own party than there ever was with Obama, and Obama did a lot of crap that should have been called out by Democrats. But all of a sudden, they act sanctimonious, like, oh, you won't go against your own party and. Ensure your own demise and your end of your career? How dare you not do that? I mean, when we had the opportunity to call out our own corrupt president, we were right there doing it, man, every second of every day. And in actuality, the only person who was really doing it was Bernie Sanders. Well, at least he was one of the foremost people. And even he had to walk delicately. I mean, if you really want to see dissension that came from the outside, people like Dr. Cornell West and Tavis Smiley called it out. So all I'm saying is a bunch of hypocrites on both sides of this thing, guys. And that's not that's not to say that, you know, hey man, we're getting screwed no matter who's in there right now. Right? Both both of them. Right? But at the end of the day, guys, does this help you and I? Even if you agree with it. Even if you think I'm just tired of hearing about Trump. Which is understandable, guys. But at the end of the day, this isn't gonna help you. It's not going to clean up the water in your neighborhood. It's not going to give you a bridge that doesn't feel like you're driving over the cobblestones of some Boston enclave or Georgetown shop. Or you projected time travel back to Rome with a cobblestone road. Like some of us travel over roads that are that horrible. But it's not cobblestone, it's called potholes, mofo. This is not going to fix that, nor is it going to actually you know, get you out of your Walmart job <laughs> or your your sweatshop Amazon gig or your gig gig that they somehow write off to make it seem like it's a real job with benefits that can sustain a family. It's not going to legalize marijuana. It's not going to end the mass incarceration of your brothers and sisters or your cousins and nephews. No, it's not going to do any of that substantive stuff. And the odd thing about it, and, and guys, I'm going to end it on this. I don't give a damn who you are or what you say. This distracts us from real shit. And all those issues, all those important things from the fact that every day veterans take their own lives Homeless people sleep outside instead of inside. People ODing on drugs. Kids only meal coming from school. Every day that's happening. Every day people will be incarcerated for a little bit of weed for a long amount of time, still sitting in jail, 60% of them, just to go to trial. Haven't been convicted of anything. Every day, police confiscating goods and monies from people more than all of the robberies combined with this freaking <sighs> So, all of our attention is on this. 
Hope you're happy. Hope you're happy, cable news. I know you are because you made a lot of money, but at the end of the day, you are horrible. And that's why we're coming from you and coming for you, all of us at Independent Media. Did you enjoy that content? I know you did. You got great taste, Johnson. What can I say? Become a member of the Tim Black Wolf Pack today right here on YouTube or go to Patreon.com, Tim's Take Live, and you'll get free stuff, special stuff, secret stuff. Do it today. Wolf Pack.